that a win? The fans are asking, um, is this another wasted season? No, no. Uh, well, hopefully not. Um, it's a case of we're disappointed tonight with the results. Obviously, there was some there was some good stuff. There was some inconsistent stuff, and I think over the last three, four games, especially, we've shown that we are good at times and uh, very, very average at times. And I think today was a microism of that. The game is all about being in both boxes. What you do in both boxes, not in between. And unfortunately, we've got a bit of a bad mix at the moment where we're inconsistent in our defending, our clearances, uh, little details in that, and we're conceding goals even on first shots, and we are not taking our chances. Uh, the opposition are defending well, um, but we need to be more ruthless in the attacking side as well. Well, I think you probably three or four times this season, I think I've got asked about the opposition goalie, which is, a, is good for them. Uh, obviously not so good for myself. Uh, yep, he was excellent today. He's a good, very, very good goalkeeper. We know that. And obviously maybe he's a difference with between winning the game and not winning the game. So, but we need to be better. Uh, I can't talk about his him other than that that he had a very, very, very good night. Over to the Zoom, Vince. Carl, um, you've got a fantastic squad. You've had a reasonably clean-ish run with injury. Why have you not been able to play? system football. It seems like the pieces must be there for the team to do better than this. Well, you know, I get it's one of the most uh, frequent questions I get asked about my squad. And, you know, people will talk about example for today. So I start up front with uh, Coxie and Juki and Brucey is a nine. And people will talk about Nikolai and Bernie um, and maybe Troisi. Last week it was uh, Nikolai, Troisi and uh, Bernie and people will ask about Juki, Coxie and that. So what, what tends to happen with me is uh, that they focus on the subs rather than the starting players. What I like to do is focus on the starting players and I'll use Brucey e. Kamau as an example. Brucey's not started a game other than Melbourne victory at home, I believe, for maybe 12, 13 games. Um, kept his head down, being a very, very good impact player and I keep getting told he's, he's a better impact player. But he's in the rhythm. He scored goals when he came off the bench. And when, he, when I threw him in last week, three games, he started. Two, he started. One, he, he was excellent. Absolutely top-notch. Top draw. Gets a couple of goals and is, is an attacking threat. So Brucey played today. And I just said to him, they, you know, it's dictated by what they do. If you can get in the team and when you get your chance, whether it's starting or sub, and you do well, then you stay in the team. It's as simple as that. I'm trying to find the right mix and blend. Um, with my starting group, uh, it's trying to find the right combinations up front. It's trying to find the right, you know, number 10 balance. Is it, is it the right shape? Is it not the right shape? So those are the questions that I and me and my staff, we have to look at and we will look at it. But it's trying, to, it's trying to make them believe that when they get their opportunity, like Bruce has done, step up, stand up, be counted and you stay in the team. Does that answer your question is it or not? <laughs> Sorry, Carl. Is, is it a concern though that maybe in that case you haven't? found your, your, your best selection at this point of the season when I would imagine most other teams in the league have, probably have settled upon theirs? Yeah, would, you, would you like to have that sorted at this stage of the season? Well, I'd like to, yeah. We've got eight games left. and um, But eight games is a lot of points on the table. We know that. So um, it's not ideal. Um, but coming into it, I knew that you know you have in your mind what you think you would like to play. Sometimes it's dictated by suspensions, injuries, things like that. But other times it's dictated by what you think is missing in the team. You know, you can be the best player, but not be part of a best combination. Uh, and that's what we've got to try and find out. And I've got to figure out that, me and my staff, uh, with that. Because as you said, you know, last week it was Coxie hasn't played. Uh, Coxie did play today and we still lost. So it's, I don't think it's that, that that's the right answer. We just have to try and... The players that are informed that train hardest and deserve to play will play. When they play, they just got to be um, good. Uh, and obviously be part of a successful team, and then and then we'll go with that again. But, yeah, no, it is a concern. Are you, are you looking to add to your squad when the, the window opens up again in a week or so? Uh, I think we're always looking to try and get better. Um, if we didn't, then we wouldn't be doing our job at the football club. So, yes, um, will we add to it? You know, if we don't add to it, no problems whatsoever. We've got enough good players in there. You know, uh, what I will say, the younger players are, are standing up admirably at the moment. 
they really are and I thought that some of them today were exceptional as well and it gets lost sometimes in a disappointment of a loss so we'll continue with them um, you know there were some good performances positives but when you lose it's it's hard to try and pick them out at the immediate end of a game Carl, do you accept, though, the pressure that's going to come from fans and from the outside? Because you look at your squad and the ambitions of the club. I mean, it seems like finals were a bare minimum expectation for the Wanderers, and you're, you're in a pretty tough predicament now to make it. Yeah. No, that's fair. Yeah, 100% that's fair. You know, I didn't come in with my eyes closed. I come with, in with them open. Obviously, they have, we haven't been in the finals for the last two, I think, years or three years. So it's not going to happen overnight, we know that. But, you know, the building blocks that I tried to put in place, maybe I thought we were further ahead than what we actually are. You know, and I've got to look at that and analyse that, and I will. Um, but that's the target. You know, we're still, we still believe we're in with a shout, and we will be, you know, if we just got to address a few things, which we will do. Um, but, yep, yeah, 100%, there's pressure in any job that you have, whether it's football or non-football. How much urgency, though, would is there on getting it right? Because you say there's eight games. That's not a lot when the no. other teams are games in hand. Yeah. How much urgency is there to change those things now and get it going within the next week or two? No, very urgent. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think it's a fair statement. We need to try and find it out sooner rather than later. We can't keep waiting and waiting and waiting. Uh, and that's got to be my job. So very soon, yeah. Okay. Daniel Boomerang, um, on the positives. People will talk about you know other teams below you. Having games in hat. Can you hear me? Sorry. Oh yeah. Sorry, I was just on another question. It's fine. Go on, Adrian. Sorry. Um, okay. I know people will go on about other teams below you having games in hand, but you feel that you still have a fair bit of control over your own destiny. A fair bit of what? Sorry. Uh, control over your own destiny. There. Well, yes, because if we win, it would depend on the games we got left. If we know we need a, you know, whatever number of wins we need, if we win them games, then it is in our own destiny. You know, will we see movement in the in the table? Yes. You know, we'll drop. We'll well, we won't go any higher until we play next if, if we don't get any points. But you know, other teams got to play other teams, so uh, it it won't probably look pretty. Um, but we'll have to accept that. But if we win if we win enough games at the last eight, then we'll get to where we want to. If we don't, we won't. And, and what about um, Vince was mentioning earlier that you've had a reasonably decent run with injuries. I mean, I know someone like Ziegler was out for a fair bit, but um, did everybody pull up all right from tonight's game? Uh, no, I think there's one or two that uh, um, one or two of the adjustments that I made are based upon um, a couple of niggles that we had. So um, I'll give it the weekend, but there might be another one or two that might drop out. Can you give us any idea who they are or what their problem is? Um, no, not really. Uh, Tatey's one. Uh, he's got a, his, his hip, hip issue. Um, it's just niggling. Um, he, so he's one of them, yeah, for sure. I'll give you one. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> you can, work thanks, out, thanks, you can probably work out the other, so that's fine. And then final one on the floor, Jonathan. Yeah, Daniel Wolverine. Yeah. Actually, it looks very dangerous when he goes up forward. Yeah. His pulse has always looked dangerous. That's a very positive for the club. Excellent. And he, I think last week he played three games and it's the first time he's done that in his career. And, you know, I would have loved to have started him today, but his levels in training, his data in training showed that he was extremely flat. That's why he didn't start the game. Obviously, Tommy was flipped to the, to the left and Georgie was missing because he's uh, had a wonderful addition to his family. So he hasn't trained for a couple of days. So that's why uh, Daniel didn't play.